Hi guys, Jamie from Boxing Life, and I just wanted to give you my reaction for the fight last night between Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin in what I guess was not an underwhelming fight, there was some good moments, but it definitely didn't live up to the first two, and I think there was obviously factors involved in that, the main one being Triple G's age, and his age really did show in this fight, I'm not gonna lie. Overall, I think it was a slow start from Gennady. I think, if anything, I think Canelo actually started quite fast and he also kind of checked him out. You know, they were both probably just checking out each other just to see how they would approach it. And I think one of the first things I noticed about Canelo was his jab was on point. You know, he was out jabbing Golovkin and according to CompuBox, obviously Golovkin has one of the best jabs in boxing and if anything, in those first kind of four rounds, Canelo was landing the jab beautifully on Golovkin and and he was also landing that left hook consistently on him and I think he even marked Golovkin up in those opening rounds. And I think Golovkin just couldn't really get a grip of Canelo's movements, his feints and also his guard. He couldn't really get past it with his own jab. His, you know, his jab really didn't really have a bite to it until the later rounds and you know I gave Canelo you know definitely the first five rounds um he definitely won all of them I think you know the first round I gave Triple G was the sixth where he kind of came back a little bit landed a nice uppercut on Canelo in that round but then the next rounds Canelo came back in the seventh and the eighth I think and started putting pressure on him again and I think he even start, you know, he did start to tire at that point, was playing possum. You know, he was clearly trying to conserve some energy and maybe try and counter Triple G coming in. And, you know, Triple G did kind of come back in the the last kind of three rounds, three, four rounds, I guess. But it really wasn't enough. And you could even tell uh, Jonathan Banks in the corner was very frustrated with Triple G. You know, I think he even got him to kind of change his game plan halfway through the fight to kind of start sticking and moving a bit more and actually it kind of worked out in Golovkin's favour he was able to then maybe apply a little bit more pressure but that was more because Canelo was starting to tire and then there's obviously been you know reasons or you could call them excuses after the fight Canelo obviously apparently had a damaged left hand but you know it's a difficult one because you know he was using that left hand really well in the opening rounds and he also had some other issues with his training apparently he wasn't able to train 100% in some of the things so yeah so maybe yeah his conditioning wasn't the best but I think overall you know Canelo was just the younger fresher man despite these problems that he had and you know these two guys you know they're world class you know and Golovkin, as much as he did look a bit slow at times and his, you know, his punches didn't really look like they had much in them, he's still a dangerous puncher, you know, he's, he can still knock you out with one punch and I think both of them were very cautious of each other, maybe they also showed each other a bit too much respect, um, but you know, I thought Canelo might push it a bit more, but you know, it wasn't worth the risk, I think, and that's kind of my thoughts on the fight as a whole. In terms of my scorecard, I scored at 116-112 to Canelo. Um, maybe I was a little bit generous in one of the rounds to Golovkin, um, giving him four rounds, but you know I can understand if you only gave him three or even two in that whole fight, as you know I think Canelo really controlled the fight. It was, you know, it was not a walk in the park, but he certainly looked the more comfortable fighter in there out of the two of them throughout the whole fight. And I guess in terms of the judges' scorecards, I was pretty shocked by two of them, if I'm being honest. Obviously, one matched mine at 116-112, which you could probably maybe consider a bit generous for maybe one or two of those rounds. And the other two were 115-113, which I honestly can't believe, you know. And it's, it's quite worrying when you see a scorecard like that because, you know, if... Golovkin had maybe pushed it a little bit more in two more of the rounds, you know, it would have been a draw. And for me, that is the kind of worrying thing about the judging. I don't know, 
how they didn't see that Canelo was pretty much dominating that fight. It's very, just very strange scorecards, I have to admit, from the judges. And I will need to have a proper look at what rounds they scored. But yeah, I'm, and from looking online, I think it looks like everyone kind of thinks the same thing. But I guess this kind of leads on to the stats for this fight and maybe you can understand why it was a little bit closer if you kind of consider, you know, the amount of punches that were thrown and that actually landed. If you look at the punch stats for Canelo, he landed 130 out of his 487 thrown and with 27% accuracy, whereas Golovkin wasn't far behind him with him landing 120 of his punches through 521 with a 23% accuracy. You know, in terms of the power punches, you know, that obviously was in favour of Canelo. He lands his power punches so cleanly and it's eye-catching when he lands those punches, I have to admit. Whereas Golovkin was getting through with some jabs, the odd uppercut and a hook around the guard now and again. But it was more in the first two rounds. I think he had thrown 32 jabs, but he had only landed two in that time. And... Canelo was in that period landing the bigger, powerful shots, uh, which no doubt would have swung those rounds for some of those judges, which was bizarre because I felt Canelo was overall kind of controlling the fight regardless. Um, but it's interesting looking at the CompuBox stats for this fight and in terms of like the punches that actually landed, it, you know, it kind of makes it look like it was a lot closer fight, but in terms of the ring generalship and the way kind of Canelo controlled the first eight rounds of the fight, it's really hard to have given that to Golovkin. So yeah, he had to have really, you know, he really had to throw bigger power punches in that fight and he was really reluctant to throw that right hand. Um, I thought he might throw a few overhand hooks over the top of Alvarez's guard, but even Canelo to an extent, you know, he shelled up quite a lot in that fight. The stats don't really tell the story, as always, but it kind of makes sense in terms of when you look at the power punch stats, in terms of how kind of Golovkin would have maybe won some of those rounds. And obviously when I say that, I don't mean towards me, I mean towards those odd judging decisions that happened last night. But yeah guys, make sure to comment below, let me know how you had scored the fight, did you have it kind of around my scorecard or did you have even wider like a 118 110 which i saw quite a lot of people have in their scorecards and i guess just finally on the fight it was just nice to see them acknowledge each other and you know i think they do appreciate you know what they've done they've created a defining legacy i think obviously this third fight didn't really give us what we wanted as fans but i think it's a good thing in the sense that now it will be officially closed off now and they can go their separate ways, whatever that is. And for Canelo, obviously, I think he said that he wants his hand to heal up and his body to recover and then he wants to go after the winner of Bivol or Ramirez. So that'll be interesting to see what happens now in that fight because apparently Canelo doesn't fight Mexicans so imagine Ramirez beats Bivol is he not going to fight Ramirez that would be interesting to see but I think he just wants to kind of get his own back against Bivol and if I'm being honest after that display tonight I still think Bivol has the edge against Canelo but we need to see obviously how Bivol gets on against Zerdo on November 5th I'll make sure to do a tactical overview video for that one guys in terms of Triple G he says he wants to box on, um, move down to middleweight. He still has two of the belts down there. And why not? You know, maybe get one last big payday and fight in Kazakhstan or something like that. Uh, there is some big fights at middleweight. You know, one of the Charlos or maybe Chris Eubank Jr. or someone like that. You know, there there is some big fights out there for Triple G. But, you know... I think he only has maybe a year, two years at most because as let's be honest, father's time does catch up on all these guys eventually and yeah, I only think he maybe only has like a year, two years left to really get one or two big last fights before he retires. But regardless, I think you have to respect Glovkin, you know, the guy's done so much for the sport of boxing, um, he's been a big inspiration to me as well and 
using his techniques and trying them out in the gym and stuff like that and what he's done for the sport you know he's you know he's a he's definitely a hall of famer in my eyes anyway and he's a guy people look up to you know if you guys haven't done so already make sure to check out my glove can training video which i posted last week and i've also posted a canelo boxing style breakdown you guys can check that out too i'll leave it at the end of this video and then just to finish off i'll just go over the undercard which happened uh, we obviously had austin amo williams against kieran conway and personally i thought that was a close fight closer than the scorecards had i think many people were expecting ammo just to clear out conway but conway's a good boxer you know i quite like him as a fighter and maybe a draw would have been a fair decision in my opinion we obviously had akamedov and rosado which was obviously just you know a whitewash akademov really dominated that fight and Rosado, you know, he keeps coming back for a payday, to be fair to him, but, you know, how much more damage can he take? And then there's obviously Jesse Rodriguez against Israel Gonzalez. It's actually a really entertaining fight. I actually enjoyed it. I think um, Jesse, he did struggle against Gonzalez. I think um, Gonzalez did really well targeting the body of Bam as he was coming into distance. Uh, but overall, Rodriguez pressure and punch volume was really the difference in my opinion he obviously got a point deducted from him as well which wasn't ideal i think he probably could have got another one off him and but if you looked at those judging scorecards for that for that fight as well i think one judge scored at 118 uh, to 109 which is you know i think that was far too wide uh, another judge scored at 117 for 110 and then 114 113 which yeah, it's just ridiculous, those scorecards for that fight. I thought Gonzalez put up a bit more of a fight than that. Um, but, you know, fair play to Jesse Rodriguez. You know, it's another win. He's definitely making a statement in terms of being fighter of the year, in terms of his achievements. Anyway, guys, that is the, officially the end of the trilogy for Canelo versus Golovkin. And I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed the whole experience. I'm glad they've come out respecting each other out of it. And, you know, it's one of these trilogies people will look back on in years to come. And in particular, the first two fights, I think this one will kind of be forgotten about, if I'm being honest. But regardless, you know, I'm glad we got to see it. And yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.